He is a member of the Forbes Technology Council and the founder and CEO of Time Extender. And he will speak to us about um, the new data empowerment paradigm that will change the world. So nothing less than that. This is your applause. Welcome. Thank you. So partly from US, uh, born in Denmark. So I understand German. I got most of what you said. So let's see if I can reference it into to something. Um, what I really liked about your presentation was that technology was only one line. Normally, when we go to these conferences, it's all about technologies and all these buzzwords. You had a blue picture with a lot of buzzwords, right? Reality is that, that the way we have done it so far is not going to solve it. And I think that's exactly what you, what you try to present, that it's about processes, it's about changing how we work, it's about changing how we see the world. And, and I love to do these presentations because then listening to you, I can just say something else because I don't have any numbers on my slides. It's just pictures, right? It's just so that we have some pretty things to look at. Uh, but there are a lot of new paradigms rising and, and, and the funny thing is now we have enterprise intelligence. Right? And, and not to say anything bad about IDC and all the rest of the, the, the analyst community, but there's a tendency that we keep inventing new terms, right? Now we need this term and this term and this term, and we need hybrid and we need cloud. We need all these different things. But do we actually stop and reflect? Why are we doing it? Why are we doing analytics? Is, is the end goal that we actually want to have a cloud data lake or cloud data warehouse? Do we want Snowflake or Synapse or BigQuery or, or any of these technologies? Is that the end goal? It might be for some of those roles that we, we, we saw that we need data engineers and software developers, but does it really matter? If we don't understand how it does it add value within the business. It was very interesting to see that we have a lack of skills, right? Not that we are not smart enough, but there's not enough of us. So if you actually want to go out and, and, and solve and become enterprise analytics, enterprise informed, data driven, I, will, I think I need to go back to that one because that's bullshit. It doesn't exist. Data driven do not exist at all. It's something that the industry is trying to, to push on you. Uh, that really is not going to happen. Because that wouldn't be the same as saying that the data and the computers would run your businesses. I don't think we believe that, right? Like machine learning is, is a real thing, AI is not. AI today is still algorithm written by a data scientist trying to answer and solve a very specific question. So that is machine learning. AI comes when the computer can figure it out, the crystal ball itself. And then I think we should be a little scared because then they can also build their own robots. And then I think we have all seen the movies, right? So we don't, we don't want to go there, right? We want to be in control. And so, so, so when we talk about being data driven and, and why we talk, I talk a lot all over the world about being data empowered and we talk about data mind and heart. Because it all needs to go together. You have a strategy, or the business people, the line of business that actually benefit from what you are doing, they have a strategy. That strategy, of course, needs to be fueled with data so that they can form the strategy, execute on the strategy, and make the right decisions. But the data will not tell you what the strategy is. The, the historical data, because that's all we have. Everything we can put together is historical data. Data that comes from a, a, a setting where you already did something. But if you decided to go into a new line of business, go into a new country, uh, in Germany you have a big car industry, the historical data for BMW would not tell them anything about electrical cars and how that journey would evolve for them. It will tell them about, you know, 
how transportation and how many people we could expect would probably need a form of a car. But the EV part, that's a different game. That's people with knowledge that are bringing that into the game. And, and if we want to solve that, we need to do, as, as you said, we need to solve the organizational problem. We need to hire the right people. We need to bring us into a, what can you say, uh, into, a, into a situation where we stop talking about technology. How many of you have a smartphone? So, everybody has a smartphone, right? How many are still taking your smartphone up, calling a phone number to book a train ticket? Compared to, I have an app for that. You all have an app, right? We don't call people anymore. That's, that's not how we work. We want an app. We want it to be, I call it Apple Easy, even then. Not all of you, of course, have an iPhone, but, but the mentality is using and having access to data should be equally easy, right? Why should it be more complicated for a business user to get access to insight, get access to the information that they need, than it is for everything we do in our private life on a smartphone? Do we believe that it would actually be possible one day, maybe not today, but one day to get there, that actually we could make it as easy for the business user to get that data at their fingertip? It doesn't mean that they have a clue what to do with it. So that's, that's a different thing, right? And, and might, they might also not have a clue what to ask for. And I think this is one of the biggest issues when we see the, the laggers and see why people are not getting the results, why they will not meet their goals in 26, is that the way we work today in the majority of the data teams or in this industry, uh, and we at Time Extender are also guilty in, in all this, is that we try to you know, go and ask the business, what do you need? What is, your, what is your question? What, how can we help you? What data do you need? What anal analytics? What BI reports? Or, or... And they try to answer the best they can, right? And then the data teams can go back and they can try to, to build it. Uh, and there are, I don't know how many iterations back and forth, trying to you know, get to something that makes sense. Uh, Depending on how your setup is and f how far you are as a, as a company on that journey, these iterations can take a long time. Because you might actually have some colleagues that need to go all the way back and try to figure out, okay, so the data that are needed to do whatever the business was asking, are you hiding somewhere in all these applications? The average company in North America today mid-size, mittelstand, as you call it in Germany, has more than 160 applications that are being used to run and operate the entire organization. That's 160 different applications that actually involve data that are relevant if you want to become data-empowered, data-driven, if you want to become more intelligent and you know, be more competitive. Half of those systems the IT department and the tech and the data teams, they haven't even heard about. Because it's something that, especially sales and marketing, they're the worst, right? So we don't have anybody from sales and marketing here, right? Because they are the worst. Because they, they don't understand security and cyber risk and, 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 and GDPR and whatever. They just take the credit card and buy something. And then they start to, to put data into those systems, PII information, and, and they have no clue what they're doing. And suddenly they want to mix it with something and they go to IT and say, fix. And then just, they simply don't understand. Okay, why don't you fix it? Uh, well, we haven't heard about your system. 
Uh, and, and by the way, it's a cloud system, so there's an API, it's very complicated and it will take six months to, to get anything meaningful out of it. Maybe we can't even get the data out because nobody was evaluating that when they were buying the system that can I actually get my data out again? And, and we see that every day. So, so what, do we, what do we actually, how do we actually get people to have that access to data? What, what does that look like if we have lack of resources? Of course we can, you know, we, in the ideal world we would hire more people. But apparently around 20% says that that's the biggest problem right now. And it's not because they don't have a budget. It's like I just came down from Denmark, we had general election uh, this week. Uh, God help us, so the, the, the left wings, they continue to, to, to run the country, so that's interesting. But, but it's interesting when you have those debates for a month leading up to an election that people ask the wrong question. They talk about the wrong things. Apparently in Denmark, there's a lack of nurses. I think it goes in all countries now. Healthcare can always need more resources, right? So we, the politicians will say, we will just need to give more billions of euros to it. The problem is that it's not going to solve it because we already have billions of euros set aside to hire healthcare personnel, but there's nobody to hire. And it's exactly the same problem that you see across any industry. That it's not because there's no funding. So maybe for the anthropologists, there's an issue getting funding uh, if, if the boss not getting the idea. But to get the data people to hire and grow the data teams, most companies do have the funding available. But it is open positions. They are not getting filled because there's not enough people. Then there are a few people leading by your IDC's competitor that are not very smart. I can say that because I told them myself. I will not name them, but there's a big competitor that is very, very stupid. No, I will not mention their name. <laughs> but, but they are saying, okay, we, 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 we need to have solved this data problem, this intelligence problem, by making data work equal software work. So because there's not enough data scientists and there's not enough data engineers or, or data architects, let's make it into software development. Let makes data products into pure software development. Because then we can just hire software developers. I was at another, a month ago, I was also in Frankfurt, a, a three day event, uh, an hour outside the city. And, and, and people were talking about, this is such a good idea because by doing that, we also completely can skip data modeling. Well, just listen to that. We're going in a direction that because we have lack of resources, we find, you know, where we can find a lot of resources, software developers, we can find them in India and in China. And then we say, okay, now that's how we're going to do data. It's not going to work. And data modeling is the most important thing we have. If we want to be ready and we want to be empowering the organizations to use data, we need to model the data. It's very simple. Because we only have one goal. Remember, any of you who are working, implementing, operating all these data solutions, the only reason you do it is to empower the business to make better decisions. Living half my time in US, uh, in Seattle, and half my time in Denmark, I completely agree to the differences on what are people measuring. The Americans are measuring completely different. They are like a, I think they come from a different planet. I love living there. Uh, it's, it's a great country uh, the most of the time, but, but they have a very different approach to running a company because they are more focused on what I call lead measures, where we in Europe are more focused on lack measures. So we're focused on the end result, the profit, the revenue, right? That's important. I think in Germany, of all countries, you need to be a profitable business. 
You know, that's the good thing, right? In in US, not as much. If you are at least if you're in tech, right? We 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 were profitable, now we're not profitable. I, I got a little brain disease, so I sold two thirds to a private equity fund uh, earlier this year uh, and, and went on a crazy growth journey with Time Extender. But, and, and I had a board meeting and I said, yes, but I think in these uncertain times, I think it's a good thing to go back and say, let's grow as fast as we can in a cash flow positive manner. And the guy from the fund just looked at me and said, you go make that plan, Heine. But remember, if you get a good idea so we can grow faster, we do have money, right? Because profit is not important in that it's growth, right? So it's also important to understand what it is we're trying to measure. But regardless of what we're trying to measure, we need to make sure that the data we are using is of high quality. For me, that means that everything that's called self-service is just down the drain. Self-service at scale, direct access, you know, click Power BI where everybody's just going direct to all the data sources. That is not a good thing. The reason is that what about data quality? Who's taking care of that? How do we make sure that what we actually see is also the right information in the right context? Can we expect that salespeople can put 500 tables from SAP together in sales, trying to get some information, and then they forget one table or one connection, and then everything is actually wrong. Half the customers didn't show up, but the data volume is so high that they didn't notice. So they jumped, they jumped to the wrong conclusions. We also need to make sure that it's governed. In Europe, we do have GDPR. That means that all the solutions where you can in sales just connect to take all your sales data is actually non-compliant. We have to remember that. There's no way that you can be DDBR compliant if you can just take all the data out of your, of your customer database. Names, addresses, email addresses, credit card information, but that's what they still do. We take it out, we dump it into Excel, we do something with it, and, and we store it somewhere and we forget to tell anybody. So when we have an audit for GDPR, you know, oh, oh, fuck, we have this information in the wrong place, right? In analytics, a lot of companies are completely missing that if they move the data into analytics, those analytics products need to be compliant. So we need to govern our data, we need to make it secure, I, th I think you are getting the idea in Germany that cloud does exist, but I still think you're a little behind on adoption, right? And I think one of the reasons is that we don't really trust it. And we don't really trust that it's run by all these American companies, right? Can we really trust to, to, to give all our things, all our important data to Snowflake or to Amazon or to Microsoft? We're getting there and we get local data centers on German soil, so I think we, it will help. And then, of course, we need to think that data needs to be accessible when they are needed. That actually influenced that whole work process that, that we, we have been doing for, for 30 years now, right? If we only build the entire flow of our analytic solution, in back in the days, people would say, okay, then I need to go back and build it in my data warehouse. I'm a big fan of storage. I'm a big fan of data lakes and data fab, what it called. We have lakes, we have, uh, Snowflake is kind of somewhere in between. We have Synapse, we have uh, Databricks. There's all these different types, but they are all doing the same. They're storing the data somewhere uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that is usable for, for the business. The problem is, when do we do it? Because of the labor-intensive work that it is to build a data warehouse, we are seeing a ton of new technologies coming out, trying to solve the problem that it takes a long time to write all that code. That also means that we only put the data into the system that actually have been asked for. So when I ask for something new, we need to go through the entire loop. I think there's another way. We, I think it's time, going back to the phone, that we get technology to work for us. I don't think technology is really helping us these days. 
It's giving us a lot of opportunities, but it's also giving us a lot of new problems. Not only that we need to hire new types of roles, we need to change our organization, we need to change our processes, but we make it more complicated, right? Every time I go out and talk to people, it's like, yeah, but it's so complicated to get all this. And now that little blue thing we saw earlier with the different technologies, cloud hybrid, data warehouse, data lake, BI analytics, that one is growing, right? The amount of things that you can do and, and, and maybe should do because it adds value is just growing. So how do we go about it? The way... I see it is there's only one way we can go. To solve all these problems, there's only one way, and that is to use automation. Automation is, for me, the only way that we can accelerate the implementation and the operation of all the, te the, the whole technology stack that are needed. I don't know if there were 10 or 15 things, but there were only one black line earlier with technology was one thing, and then there was 14 other things that was important. And, and, and why don't we just make that little technology thing even smaller? Simply just have a very strict focus on how do we, how do we just make all this to go away? So that data are instantly available. Because the problem you have and you are facing every day is you don't know what the next question is. No one, none of us knows. Especially my organization can testify that it's very difficult to predict what my next question is. Because once I see something, when I start to see some data, you start thinking. You start communicating with other people. And when you get to that point, you also get a new question. Questions comes very often out of dialogue. People interacting in their work and, and then, okay, but then what about this? We could also look at this. And then you go the cycle. So the first thing we need to do is to have technology work for us. Automation in any form, not only the way we do it, but as a, as a concept, will help you make sure that these tedious things that need to happen can happen way, way faster. And it's really not rocket science. People say it takes, I don't know, two years to build a data warehouse on top of SAP. I would claim the moment that you understand your data model you want in your data warehouse, you have a mapping thing to do and you're done. So I would argue, two months maximum. That's on a bad week, right? Because what automation does is it removes all the technical work. It removes the development, the code writing, the selection and defining of all the underlying technology. It's the same when you do ro robot process automation. You put it in and it does fix all the manual work that you do in, a, in an old system that you cannot integrate. And that mindset can actually be introduced into analytics to make sure that you prepare data. 80% of the time and your data scientists are using are being used on getting their hand on the right data. You know, there's been, I don't know, hundreds of studies showing that that, that is the data science biggest problem from their perspective, because they want to write algorithm, they want to solve the business problem, they don't want to mess around with data, but they end up spending 80% of their time doing it. What if they just had access to the data? Just think about, it. what if we just used automation to say, okay, but all the data, all the relevant data is here. If it's a lake or if it's a warehouse, depending on what they need, but it's here. So you can just skip all that work trying to connect to all these different data sources. The only thing you have to let go on this journey is the fear that arises in all of us when 
we feel we lose control. Today I have control, I'm writing the code, it's very detailed, I'm very good at it, but I'm losing control. When we automate, yes, we do lose control, but we gain so much more. And when we gain, we can help the business become data empowered. 